Hello and welcome to Siri Mangalo Stories, where we answer a question about meditation and the practice. And we ask our community um, to share their experience. Uh, to this week's question is what is what has been the most challenging about being on the path, or what is the most challenging about your meditation practice? And uh, we have some fellow meditators as well as some um, volunteers on our call today. Um, I guess I will start as always. Um, my, the question again is what has been the most challenging? Uh, for me, the, I think the challenging part was at the beginning of my path, I did not have a teacher. I had YouTube <laughs> and Google, and I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I thought I knew what I was doing. I read a lot and I researched a lot, but it wasn't until I met Bunte and last year that um, it really helped shape my path and my practice to what it has become today, which is incredible. And um, so that was, for me, understanding that one of the big challenges is finding a good teacher, um, someone who you can um, who can guide you and explain things to you and just say something and just be like, oh, I get it. Thank you for for those amazing words. Um, so that to me was been uh, the most challenging. And now that I have that teacher, I feel like I don't have that that challenge anymore. Um, so that's, that's my answer. If anyone has a question about that, feel free to ask. If not, we will go to whoever wants to share next. Hello. Uh, I, I totally second what uh, Jeff said at the beginning of my path, which was almost a decade ago. I was uh, trying to uh, follow uh, many traditions. And I tried to follow YouTube, tried to follow Spotify, guided meditations here and there, hypnosis, you name it. However, <clears throat> if I should say that I was uh, noticing any progress or any kind of results, I don't think so. Because the moment that I uh, met uh, Bante from uh, Sri Mangalo, I noticed that uh, I do have a path right now. I could say that I am on the path. I could feel that I am more disciplined. There is a more of a discipline. And I know myself that, yes, I am following the uh, a formal meditation practice, not anymore whatever Spotify suggests to me or whatever YouTube suggests to me, which I mean, by, by any means, it might work for some people, but did not do the, the job for myself. So uh, I signed up right away for the course. After following him on YouTube for so many Q&A sessions, I signed up for the course and I started to go through it. And a uh, few weeks, I started to notice that uh, my not only my practice has uh, changed and I'm feeling more comfortable in my practice, but it is my perception in life. The way I see life, the way I interact with uh, emotions, with hard feelings and hard emotions. I'm a father. And I'm a full-time employee, so you name it. The things that gets, gets thrown at us. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, journey that I feel that even when the course ends, I still have tools to carry forward with my uh, practice and in life as well. So uh, it has been wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, would love even to have... Uh, the proximity may be a bit closer, like uh, the meditate to have a meditation center where I could go and see Bante face to face would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your share. That's amazing. Um, so you did just have done the online course and you're really looking forward to doing an in person meditation retreat is what I'm hearing. Absolutely, absolutely, Jeff. Uh, I when you do the online course, you get a little bit of what is what is more there to to cultivate. 
what is mm. more there to benefit. So of course, I am so looking forward for that. Yes, in person. One of the questions that we asked um, in our previous uh, uh, Sir Mangalo stories was, what courses did you take? And uh, we, it, we established that the, found, the, the at home course is really the teaching of the steps and how to meditate. It's the, it's the knowing the practice. The in-person retreat itself is the, is the, is the where you do it, where you practice what you learned. And um, it's a very different experience because you're now that you know how to do it, you're going deeper into um, you know the practice. And it's amazing to have a guide right there. So I could I so thank you for um, that's amazing to share. Does anyone else have any questions for Rahib? Sorry, I don't mean to take up too much time. Just okay. one more thing. So the, the thing that I am looking really forward for is uh, to fine tune my walking meditation. When you have Bhante watching you or uh, any teacher that is available at the center watching you, then you'll know that there is something that could be fine tuned and right away could be addressed. Thank you again for allowing me to uh, enjoy this journey and I'm looking forward for more. Thank you. Thank you so much for your share. Um, who would like to go next? We can hear from Edit or Mila. I can go next. Go ahead. I say starting off, it's a little different because you really don't know what you're doing at all. You're just repeating stuff in your head, but later on, it all starts to make sense and Honestly, it helps with the experiences that you take in a lot. Uh, if there are any problems that I've faced, maybe the life around you, either things can gravitate towards you or they go away. But put it easily, you know, family, friends, uh, you know, they, they take meditation differently than you do, obviously, if they don't do it or if they don't know what it is. Uh, but more, less or not, you know, that loneliness really helps your practice. That's, that's not really, you know, something that's, that's been a drag on me. I enjoy it. Uh, if there any, if there's anything that I'm looking forward to, definitely the in-home course are going to meet Bonte. Uh, and fine-tuning the practice, piggybacking off of that, that would be awesome. Uh, that's about it. That's fantastic. Thank you for your sharing. Um, how do you, how how do you deal with um, sometimes dealing with other people who are not on the same path or are not meditating and don't understand? How do you? What's your interaction with them like? Try to be as friendly as possible. <laughs> Anything other than that, <laughs> it just leads to, to madness. Uh, I've had some times where I've been called brainwashed, <laughs> or like I'm in a cold or something. Uh, I find it funny because there's nothing about this practice that, that's even completely wrong or bad to begin with. So, you know, you try to explain it to people, they don't get it. It's okay. You know, life goes on. Amazing. Does anyone else have any questions for Sean? Yeah. What uh, What are you struggling with right now, Sean? Hmm. You know, I'm starting to see impermanence, and it could be a little sad, but at the same time, uh, it's really beneficial. It really is. Uh, it helps you cope with things, I guess, a lot more and really understand it. Mm -hmm. Struggling not as much, you know, just take it moment by moment. Go ahead, Rahim. I have a question for Sean. It, uh, it is uh, very, very touching the, uh, your, the experience that you have uh, just described. And I do have a question, if you don't mind, please. So 
since joining the uh, the server, I believe on um, on the uh, sorry, forget the name of that uh, app. So Discord. The, yes, Discord. Thank you, thank you, Edith. So since joining the Discord app, have you felt that uh, it changed? Meaning that the support that the Sangha or the community provides you with any questions that needs to be answered or whatnot, have you noticed any difference? Did it help you? Definitely. Uh, I'm 16, so never ask questions like this to anybody else. Man, I'm just a teenager. <laughs> so the community can really understand you, especially since they're doing the exact same thing. So uh, yeah, has the community helped you at all? Absolutely. The uh, the presence of the community, actually, how you feel like uh, everyone is available there to 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 share their experience right. with you and to answer your questions. And also, there is nothing that is called shame in this community at all. Right. Everyone is accepting everyone, which is uh, with one one rule only loving kindness and compassion. It is wonderful. Thank you so much. That is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, um, I just uh, I wanted to add that it's been really uh, exciting to see a lot of activity on our Discord server, uh, and especially from uh, younger people. Um, you know, I'm not exactly old. I'm in my 30s, but uh, you know, I think about what I was going through in my life when I was a teenager and in my early 20s, and like how much suffering could have been saved if I had this practice and this community. Um, so, like, I'm glad to help support others in that way. And I'm glad that we have this whole community doing that and helping people through their challenges. Yeah. Yes, definitely the community can help with overcoming some of these challenges of being on the path and uh, your meditation practice. Um, who else would like to share their uh, experience? I can share. Wonderful. Hi. I have my camera here and my monitor here, so uh, forgive me and forgive the lighting. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Sumner, and uh, I guess I've been uh, engaged in a meditation practice for less than six months. Um, I'd say that I played around with meditation before, uh, just based on what friends were doing, but no real, no real guidance, and I just finished the online course, um, what is it, three weeks ago now, or something like that. Um, I really, really like the course. I'm very grateful that um, something like that is available for everyone and it's free. I think that's awesome. Uh, and um, yeah, I faced, uh, I don't know what, but the, you know, I got up to two hours meditation every day and it was a habit and I was building upon it. And for whatever reason, after that last uh, meeting with uh, Bonte, it was just uh, my daily uh, habit kind of fell apart. And uh, that's the major challenge that I've been dealing with. I, I've been uh, doing half hour here, half hour there and trying to get back uh, to doing a half hour every morning and every evening. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's a, just putting that out there as a the challenge I'm facing. I, I also, a lot of things about uh, uh, becoming. So, I, you know, I'm learning certain skills in my life and I have certain plans or ideas. And, and I, sometimes I think, oh, this is, uh, uh, this is ambition or this is the ego and this is, this is poor. Uh, this is not good for you. Um, so still trying to find that balance between uh, you know, these extremes of thinking that, oh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'll go become a monk right now because I'm ready for that, uh, versus I'm going to be completely in the material world and, and kind of live in what I was raised in. Um, I do very much want to go to, uh, the meditation center in Canada. I'm just over here in Pennsylvania. It's not very far, but unfortunately it's, uh, not possible to travel there. Uh, right now. So I am looking forward to doing something that like that. And um, I think uh, based on what other people were saying here, I think, yeah, getting more engaged in the community. I've been working on the the editing work of some of the booklets. And I, I really like that because 
it gets me thinking about it and, and gets me seeing other perspectives, um, you know, just going through all the material of people's questions. Um, but I'm, you know, that's solitude, that's kind of solo work for the most part. Um, so maybe getting more engaged in the uh, slightly more social aspects of the community might help me. But um, I'm very grateful that, uh, you know, this community is here and I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, for being able to have a, a, a teacher. So uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Sumner. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I was going to ask, um, anyone can answer really, um, if, if it surprised you after, you know, practicing different, um, in different styles or just searching and, and following the YouTube or whatnot. I even heard, I think, uh, mind, uh, hypnosis or something. And uh, so did it surprise you, the whole um, technique, learning, learning the technique, basically, how to meditate? Who was surprised? <laughs> yes, I was. Reed, you can go. Oh, go ahead, please, go ahead. Uh, I used to do uh, the guided meditations, like the I am meditations. And honestly, looking at it now, I did nothing but make it worse. Uh, it would build a lot of conceit. Uh, and and uh, it felt like it would lower the self-esteem more than it would help it, you know, depending on the I am chance. Uh, finding the the vipassana meditation. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what I could say. I could uh, definitely. Uh, I could. I could say the uh, the surprising is actually this kind of expected because surprising and expected at the same time. When you say that is Bhante who's going to be guiding you, which is right away you know that there is going to be uh a meditation that is stemming from the dhamma that is not just uh, a trial and error or somebody who's trying a way of just because they thought that it might look cool to some people no it did give me a different uh, pers pers uh perspective to meditation and made me feel that this is a very solid practice that could go on with you for the rest of your life and to me, maybe we're talking about meditation only, but ha having the Dhamma with it, it did help me to evolve a lot. It did help me to polish my own mental skills. I'm still working on my mental uh, purification like everyone else, but it does help you to get into this kind of path, to purify yourself, to free yourself from uh, suffering, and to understand more suffering and to observe it more instead of absorbing it. So that's what I noticed. That's what I noticed, definitely. Thank you. Well, Rahi, that was incredible and very well articulated. I feel exactly the same way. Um, having the combination of the practice and hearing the words of the Dhamma has been it helps me understand and put into, um, it motivates me. It keeps me motivated to, to practice. Um, wow, very well said. <laughs> Anyone else who would like to answer that question posed by Edit? Yeah, I have um, a slightly different experience because my practice did not really start with a period of looking at various things on YouTube or exploring various traditions. Um, you know, mostly I was turned off by anything that I considered too woo-woo. Um, so, so when someone introduced me to Mahasi style Vipassana, like that was, that was a particularly attractive way of doing things for me. Like I'm a math guy. I like clear organized systems uh and this was like yeah it's like a clear organized system for improving your mind and for um learning to live in the world without suffering so you know surprising in that it just very much shattered any 
any sort of stereotypes I had about Buddhism and about meditation and about uh, spirituality in general. Yeah, it's, it's like a formula you can use for any situation, right? For, uh, and, and what is not thought, uh, it's um, dealing with the feelings, dealing with the thoughts, dealing with concepts, so, and, and even differentiating between them, like, oh, this is a concept, this is an actual experience. And um, I mean, having, having the tools, what to do with them, it's amazing. Thank you. That's uh, that's incredible. Um, thank you for sharing. I wanted to sort of connect that with what Sumner was saying earlier um, about his challenges of um, continuing to meditate as a, in, in daily life as a daily practice. Um, for me, it was a, it. Um, I started meditating maybe six years ago. Um, and I just slowly built up to my practice. And what I always um, tried to do in my head was try, I was a little bit more competitive. So I'm, I'm the type of person that needs, needs to do a challenge or something to stay motivated. Um, and so what I said to myself is, I want to just try to beat my personal best. So every day I would try to do more and more and more. And that was the game that I played. For some other people, it's it's just trying to do it every day, every day, even if it's just five minutes, at least you can say you did it every day. You you did consecutive days. And so, you know, it depends on, you know, what's going to motivate you. Um, for me, it was um, the, the former and for other people, it's like, oh, I could totally do it every day and, you know, just commit to doing every day and slowly build the practice that way. And for me, the practice, you know, there's formal practice where you actually, you know, have the intention of sitting and, and walking um, for a predetermined amount of time. But there's also um, being mindful in everyday situations. And doing the formal practice helps you so much in the everyday um, scenarios. Um, and when I realized that I can be grounded in my practice. The practice makes me makes me better at it. Just like shooting hoops. If you're gonna practice shooting hoops and you keep getting them in, you're gonna keep getting them in. It's gonna be very easy. So don't lose the practice. The biggest mistake I think is to lose the practice. Commit to doing it every day. Commit to doing it more than the previous day. I'm, I, when I first started, it was 20 minutes. And after a year, it was an hour. And now I'm up to four hours, five hours a day. And it's like, no big deal. It's no big deal to me because I, I, I truly, um, uh, I'm truly at peace when I'm doing it. So why do I, why wouldn't I want more peace and calm in my life? Um, especially if you're working and you have kids and you have lots of things on the go, you, it's like, you want that peace. And so for me, the, the practice, um, is, it's not, I don't want to say easy, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm better, I'm more committed to it for sure. When I see the benefits right there, right then and there. And I'm like, I want those benefits all the time. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to sort of, um, share with, uh, Sumner. Who else would like to share, um, and answer this question? How, what are the challenges of being on the path and um, what are the challenges of your practice? May I? Please. Thank you. So I do have uh, maybe uh, like an advice to the people that, uh, who are trying to challenge you and telling you that, why are you on this path? Why do you meditate? suddenly you started meditating and why which i got that so many times in the previous years until this day even even in my family they 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 question it mm -hmm. so my my only my only uh, answer would be is to let them know that uh, if you, simply mindfulness how can you question mindfulness it's simply like you're questioning is this water it's water is this air is it's air but mindfulness is when you touch the water 
the feeling of touching the water, whether it's cold or hot. You see what I mean? So this is some people are, are mindfulness is totally foreign to them. So the way to just make, just make it a, a bit closer to them by letting them know that there is nothing to be challenged in this point. I'm not sure if I'm making too much sense, but I don't know. I've tried it and it, and it did work with many, many people, but some people, if they have their own views, they're not willing to really back down, but that's okay. With Meta, it will end up, they will end up uh, coming along. Very interesting point. I was actually talking to somebody um, last weekend. I was uh, telling her about meditation and she was very much like, well, why do you need to meditate? And, you know, um, and, and everything. And she's tried meditation with other, you know, styles and whatnot. And she, she even once reported, oh, I did a smiling meditation. I quite enjoyed that. And I said, a smiling meditation, how interesting. Um, and, but she was constantly looking for something and she was looking for an end result. And at the same time, she had all this doubt that it was going to work. And I said, well, those are one of the hindrances. So if you have that, it's going to impede on your progress. And knowing that is also critical. So again, going back to understanding the Dhamma, the understanding the practice, understanding some of the challenges that might arise, that's not in, like it's natural within all of us to have doubt, to have um, distraction, to have drowsiness. You know, when people say, how could you meditate for so long? It's like, don't you feel tired? It's like, not, not really, <laughs> not when I meditate. And when you're walking and you're sitting, it's like the walking energizes you. And so, you know, I, I love that everyone was saying how it's a methodical process. This is like, there's a system to it. There's a methodology to it. It's not just some random, you know, trying to sit and not think about anything. You're going to eventually think about something, but it's what you do with that thought. And that's the practice. And so um, I'm grateful for, um, for learning this, the way that it's been taught. Yeah, I, um, that sort of reminds me that, you know, I would say my biggest challenge is or at least when I was starting off, was uh, goal orientedness. Um, mm. you know, and I was I was drawn to this sort of practice because of its um, systematicity. And so I thought, I mean, and it's true. You know, you put in the work, you'll you will uh, you will get the goal in the end. But uh, that is hindered by sort of um, yeah by trying to to evaluate yourself and, and always um, craving, you know, a specific goal or even just a specific, you know, mental image of what say, you know, being an enlightened person look, looks like, um, you know, so that was definitely a major struggle for me for a while, um, especially when I was practicing, you know, in this style, but before having the guidance of Bhante Yutadamo, um, and I think like, yeah, in the, in the first live course that I did, uh, the sort of paradox, you know, the helpful paradox of, of our practice, which is that like, you know, it's only in those moments of truly letting go and really just, you know, taking everything back to a specific moment rather than uh, setting your mind on a future goal, do the, um, you know, is that goal, met um and so i think that like yeah it's this you know my challenge of having a lot of ego and and sort of fear and worry tied up with the goals of practice um being able to let go of those things help fulfill uh the ultimate aims of the practice anyway yes thank you go ahead and let um i I uh, wanted to respond to what Adder was saying a little bit earlier about how the practice is systematic and there's a technique and um, tie it in with the challenges. Um, so for me, it was also a little bit different. I did not um, look for, I did not try different techniques. I just happened to um, meet Bonte early on about six years ago. And uh, that is the only practice that I tried um so i was lucky that way 
And um, as time went on, um, and right now, currently I'm noticing that the challenges are um, quite predictable. They're, um, they're the hindrances for me personally. So desire, aversion, distraction, um, laziness. Um, for me, there's no doubt uh, anymore. And that's a relief, honestly. Um, but other things uh, still get in the way. So your mind still gets in the way and um, maintaining a daily practice is always a challenge for me. And um, it really varies. Sometimes I can do, you know, 10, 20 minutes and sometimes I can do a lot more than that. And um, um, every day um, I have to return um, myself to, um, the present moment and um, practice um, during the day also, which is a challenge for me and also do some formal practice. So how are you staying motivated, Mila, to try to practice every day? Um, well, it helps to know that it's helpful in my heart. I know for sure 100% that is, it's beneficial and it's you know, the right thing to do, and I'm moving in the right direction. Um, and that thought, just knowing that um, I'm doing the right thing is very helpful. Um, but also, if I am not practicing, not, you know, not um, getting cross with myself, if I'm not doing as much as I feel like I should be doing. Um, so just staying, um, staying, in the now, I suppose, is helpful and um, not dwelling on, um, you know, not thinking in terms of concepts, but, but just bringing myself back to the benefits. Mm. Amazing. Anyone have any questions for Mila? Anything else? Anyone wants to add anything? I would say about uh, staying uh, staying motivated every day for myself. Staying motivated is uh, I'm quite uh, happy with who I who I am right now. So that motivates me because I feel like if I stop meditating and I stop my practice and I stop my my, my daily or like hour minute by minute mindfulness i feel that i'm going to indulge into my own defilements and this is kind of a i shouldn't say worry i know it's a hindrance and it is uh it is to be noted but still i don't want to uh to to uh indulge into what the society is throwing at us because we're not we're not living in a monastery we're not uh, ordained so we get some extra challenges from the society work uh, kids you name it right so this is uh, this is my main focus on staying motivated to practice every day i think myself thank you mm, that's great so interestingly i think i possibly i had the most <laughs> lots of challenges actually i noted down a couple and uh I'm actually not hearing them, so I'm going to share. So first, first obstacle for me was uh, actually my own mother. She was very, very adamant of, um, you know, to, to just not let me do it or not let me go to Canada. And uh, she was very sort of mean about it and uh, saying, <laughs> saying, you know, Christian um, views about it, even though I don't think she was, uh, is that religious, but uh, still. And uh, the biggest challenge was, is, and I mean was, for sure, it's that um, even when I uh, came back from Canada, I didn't have a community here and uh, no one was practicing no one um, no one to share with and and we didn't even have this uh, discord community or anything really um, 
So I have, haven't have um, been in touch with other meditators. And so it was a lonely, lonely thing in the beginning. Um, but um, many of my friends actually um, start, I mean, they noticed the change and they, they wanted to to do it themselves. And, and so this is how it got easier and easier. And it took me almost five years, but my mother is fine now and it's not. So, uh, but, but yeah, it, it has been a really huge challenge um, inside the family um, that I'm, I'm doing this and, um, and it, I, I did know that this is helping me, like this is, this is my life basically from now on and uh, not having them on board, it was a huge difficulty. Uh, other than that, very predictable, like Mila was saying, even, even to this day, um, entertainment is a huge hindrance for me. Um, I mean, hindrance. I, I just let, let myself <laughs> watch, uh, watch things. So, um, and, and uh, that re that's related to the eight precepts. So I, I was, I usually want to keep the eight precepts, but uh, both with the eating afternoon and consuming entertainment is still a challenge for me, so. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, same here. <laughs> same here. Well, well, you know, I um, when I took the first at the first retreat, um, I guess that's the foundations course. Yeah. When I first took that course, um, you know, when you're at the center, you take the eight precepts. Well, I just and that was in January. And I decided to just keep the eight precepts um, for as long as I could. I had already renounced a lot of things like entertainment a year before, prior. So, you know, I was already doing intermittent fasting. I was already, um, I was already celibate, like, you know, TMI, but um, I, I was already sleeping on the floor because my, I had back issues and sleeping on the floor was actually really good for my back. And so keeping the eight precept wasn't, wasn't much of a challenge for me. Um, and then I took the second course and that was incredible. And I got a lot out of it. And, but after I took the course, I, I was talking to Bunte and I said, I think I'm going to go back to taking just the five precepts because I have, you know, I'm having more people over coming in to visit me and they bring food and, and it's like afternoon because they're coming in the afternoon to visit me and they're bringing food. It's just not, it's just felt so rude to like not accept, you know, their gifts and their, their warm thoughts and, and whatnot. And so I discussed it with Bante and he's he like, no, you don't have to keep the eight. If you keep the five, that's fine. And you could keep the eight on special occasions or when you're doing a formal practice or you, if you want to dedicate it to somebody, um, dedicate your practice to somebody. I said, that's amazing. I could, I could totally do that because I feel like I'm grounded and not, and, and, and because of the two retreats that I did so close together and already renouncing so many things. I felt like I'm grounded that I can, you know, watch a TV show and not feel completely distracted, you know, um, you know, sit at a table and not feel like I need to um, be all high and mighty. <laughs> so, um, and, and of course, I can, I can eat in the afternoon with my friends when they come, my friend, family, when they come over for like, you know, a picnic or something. So um, I kind of uh, eased up my, my strictness, but I definitely didn't, didn't feel like it was a big challenge. So I guess I was prepared. I was really prepared for it as well. I had it in my head that, no, I'm going to renounce these things because they do not serve me. Um, and so now I look at television and new movies very differently. I think of television oh, yeah. like... I, I, I noticed that as well. Like, <laughs> it's so, so different now when you look at the movies. Like, you know, it's acting and... Right. But, 
I'm I, I think I'm a story junkie. <laughs> like I like um, a good story. Yeah. I've been watching more documentaries and so that's something that, you know, yeah. I, I've been enjoying quite a bit. Sean, what did you want to add? Uh I don't know if this is just me, but uh with the idle speech. I don't know if this is just me, but during conversations, there could be a lot of awkward moments. I'm asking that to everybody if that has happened to you. So what, what I'm hearing is that your question is, um, has it, have you ever had those awkward silences when you're having a conversation with people? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I think, I think I intentionally, um, right in practicing right speech or even just having more mindfulness in my life and having sort of different priorities than I used to, um, yeah, I realized how much of normal conversation is filled in with really just empty banter. And, uh, so I definitely have found yeah, I've found more silences in my conversations with people. And at first I did find this really awkward. And in fact, often find the temptation to, to revert back to sort of old speech patterns and in particularly gossip. I live in a pretty tight knit community where there's, there's always something to gossip about. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, again, just like people who uh, have now sort of been aware that I've been on this path and practice for a while, uh, just uh, get used to who I am and, uh, you know, have learned to appreciate me being a much more quiet, less chatty person. Uh, and, you know, I've found being willing to just let that be the case uh, actually just makes a lot of really pleasant, peaceful interactions. So I certainly struggle with it whenever I meet someone new. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm always tempted to uh, just make people like me. And there are a lot of things that we do in in our normal interaction with people to, to make them like us that aren't necessarily wholesome, aren't necessarily conducive to mindfulness. I I, I could share something actually when I'm talking to people and uh, let's say if there are people that are outside of the practice and they're not interested even and uh, to avoid those awkward uh, silent moments I think I tend to throw a little bit of uh, like indirectly some uh, some uh, Dhamma quotes that I learned and I start to let them know how uh, maybe we could better ourselves let's say they want to gossip, for instance, at work, they want to gossip, they want to talk about somebody. But I but then they, it come it comes my turn, they say, what do you think about that person? Well, I think about that person is like my brother or sister in humanity. <laughs> so uh, I think about them that I could be me, I could, I think about them that and then and then I will, uh, I will start to develop a little bit of some uh, some words from from the dhamma from the right speech uh, and the uh, non divisive uh, speech so sometimes it works and sometimes if it doesn't work let's say i just stay quiet silence is uh, works sometimes <laughs> thank you anyone else want to share about um, uh, how they deal with silent moments so... during conversation mm -hmm. What I've uh, learned about this, like um, there are two types of people who uh, still continue to talk to you the way they want to. Basically, their life, their clothes, their manicure, their hair, whatever. And um, I think for, I mean, uh, having a conversation with them, um, it's it's um, useful to be just polite and short, but but still not um, say that, oh, I don't care or something. But um, 
you can not care in silence <laughs> inside and, but you have to be polite and uh, engage you know in in in, in a bit uh, uh, with my dharma friends with, with with i usually say look um let's let's not talk about this or something so it's different when um when you're sort of the center of the conversation uh, when people come to you to talk to you and um and then it's it's not an option that you are going going silent and they ask you to something and and um so yeah you you have to just find the right sentences and um mindfulness Bante says says it lots of times just try to concentrate on whenever someone is talking is talking about their clothes or what they want to buy i'm, I'm usually just yeah sitting sitting hearing hearing no big deal and when it's your turn you you just say yeah yeah okay that's great and and <laughs> so yeah that's what i do actually and um what i wanted to share is that i i think from the get-go i uh i started to ban any type of uh, jokes like if i notice that someone is joking you know inappropriately or joking about somebody else or being sarcastic or being egotistical or um i think that's the word so i i always say oh you know jokes are 80 uh, percent tr true and <laughs> <laughs> if you're 90 percent true so consider what you're talking because yeah it's reflecting on you basically mm -hmm. yeah that's that's interesting the, the question of what um what counts as appropriate joking and i think there was some conversation about humor and laughter in the discord recently um oh. uh but i remember you know, on our uh, pilgrimage in India, there was definitely a point when Bhante was making remarks that uh, I would count as jokes. He was commenting on um, uh, all the rupa that was uh, outside uh, our window as we were driving by, rupa being the, just uh, the matter of the material world or the yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't know my Pali very well. Um, uh, but in in light of what you're saying, Edit, that you know, jokes are eighty percent true. Uh, it's like a an interesting, wholesome opportunity for humor, where there is a good, you know, there is a good lesson about seeing the rupa and all of the the beautiful things that were around us, um, and yeah, just how distinct that is from a lot of joking that that I encounter in daily life, which is usually some form of a, a subtle way to complain or to uh, boast or to put others down. Hmm. Um, probably because I'm a woman, uh, I encountered a lot of jokes relating to sexuality, right? So that's why I'm saying like it's it's enormously large amount of um, of that coming to you basically if you are a woman I don't know if Mila can relate but this is what mm -hmm. happened. Sean, did you want to add something? Yeah, for a lot of my lifetime, I grew up in a bad uh, neighborhood. And I indulge myself in a lot of bad things. And uh, a lot of those people now that they come up, uh, I try to explain to them what they're doing and how it could wrongfully impact them. And it hasn't really got across, but my mm -hmm. question to you all again is, have you ever really gotten to somebody, gotten through to them? Yeah. Yeah. Many, many people, I mean, yes. <laughs> 
I think, I think for me, um, it starts with me. So, wow, where do I even start? When I first started exploring Buddhism, I, I came back from Vietnam and I was inspired by uh, the Bodhisattva compassion where, you know, she was um, holding off on her enlightenment until other beings were saved. And that was very admirable and very like it very it spoke to me. And so when I met Bunte, I asked him, oh, this is Theravada, which is different from what I'm interested in. Um, I understand with Theravada, you just work on yourself and like that's it. And he said, well, yes, but if you work on yourself and become enlightened, you can become a Buddha and save everybody. And I was like, huh, <laughs> I never considered that. And so he kind of had me sold. Okay, I'll work on myself and I'll, I'll do what I need to do for me. And through that, others can see how I've transformed, how I've changed so much. Like when I was 16 years old, I ran away from home. I was living on the street. I was doing lots of drugs. I got into the wrong people with the wrong crowd. And even me knowing what I know now, if I went back in time and told my 16 year old self, he would just been like, yeah, whatever, right? And so I think my point is, is that you can't really convince somebody that this is the right path, that, you know, or you can't, you know, all, all I think you can do is work on your practice and inspire others through your own practice. And so I've been able to help people discover and explore this path because they've seen me being on this path, not because I'm like telling them that they should go on this path. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I'd like to share. Absolutely. I could uh, second to that when it comes to uh, uh, different traditions and whatnot. At first I was uh, practicing or even uh, drawn to the Zen tradition mm -hmm. it was yeah this is the the, uh, the path of the bodhisattva and then uh, but there is something interesting when i was really young i was 15 years old i was interested in the theravada tradition and i wanted to become a monk back then but then i looked at myself around me the the, the society that i grew up in i mean you can't even talk about buddhism so let alone becoming a monk. So, so it was kind of hard and challenging because I refuted all kinds of um, entertainment when I was a kid and I found that the material world, it's pointless. I just want to evolve as a person so I could possibly help others. And when I, when I dropped this, I started to go into, I could totally relate to you, Jeff, and uh, maybe others uh, here. I started to go into choosing my own path, which is which wasn't that nice at the beginning at all. And uh, even when it started to get worse and worse, I started to notice that, okay, well, you know what? My suffering is increasing. That's all I'm doing. All I'm living suffering pretty much. I'm eating suffering, I'm drinking suffering. So let me see now. It's time to fine tune that path. And then I started to delve into a little bit more and more into meditation, like as I said earlier, a decade ago, a decade ago. And uh, until I, I met Bante, then I was like, okay, there you go. That's the path that I really wanted from the get go. Mm. But it took me so long. And I'm glad it took me that long. That way I could appreciate it even more and I could hold on to it even stronger. So that allowed me to appreciate it more and to understand it and to strive to cultivate any goodness I could cultivate in it. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to share? No? Okay, so thank you so much everyone for um, this incredible uh, meeting and sharing your stories and may your practice continue to grow. And again, this is part of our Sir Mongo stories in efforts to raise uh, money for our fundraiser to create a forever, forever, create a, um, a center for everyone 
to participate in these in-person retreats. So uh, feel free to share this video with your friends and family. And, um, and of course, share the link to the fundraiser on GoFundMe. Um, again, thank you for, for attending and we will see you soon.